Well, hey YouTube, it's PD, and I have done some upgrades to the BC Fish, the Bass Masterson. We got rid of the cheap tuners, and we got some 24 to 1 case tuners that are nice. Uh, there was a pickup, a P base pickup, that it was it was 496. Five dollars, and it said this is the original one they used in the BC Rich. That's what it said on that. So I was looking at it, and like they gave the weight of it, the weight was a lot heavier. It seemed like it was thicker than what I had in there. I mean, what I had in there was like a really cheap, like a five dollar P base pickup, and it had the exposed poles where these poles are not exposed. And I'll tell you what, when I think of uh, late 80s metal guitars I think of this type of pickup I think of uh, no exposed poles so this pickup arrived and it ohmed out an ohm hotter than what was in there and it weighed a lot more it was significantly heavier so I'm gonna say that was a big upgrade was that pickup i think that pickup is going to make a big difference compared to what was in there it was a really flimsy real thin pull pieces we got a, a replacement bridge uh, with brass saddles but it has the old one that i had on there had chrome springs and chrome screws okay so that it didn't quite look right and then we got these bird's eye maple uh, knobs. <laughs> they're, they're just speed knobs that have a real sharp shade of red. I really like those knob, knobbies. I really like these compared to what was in there. Um, I had just some black knurled, pretty uh, nondescript they don't have much character. They're they're good knobs. They really are. And I mind you, I will. I do. I do uh, play with the knobs when I'm playing bass. I do, especially the tone knob. Um. So yeah, we got a new bridge saddle. We got a new pickup. We got new knobbers and new tuners i think i did show you guys that i had mounted this tuner on here um we're going to be getting some ghs ground wound power wound strings which is like they they supposed to do the job that they're supposed to sound alike as a regular uh, round wound string would it has that zingy high end um, this has less string noise and it's much easier on your fingers because they grind down the uh, the winding that goes on the outside so yeah i i put a pair of those ground wound strings on the blue base and right after that, we replaced the blue base with my wife's. White base. Her I micro. Base. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be testing this out. I've got these finger finger cots here. Um, I've got these finger cots here. This is like a, a ridiculous amount of finger cuts. These are black cloth. I didn't see them. Yeah. Well, this it was two dollars for this, and um, I got these two. These were two dollars. They've got a wrist strap. Um, I developed, like, okay, back in the day, I was a bass player. 
was a bass player for a long time. I um, and I love playing bass. I really do. I really do. But there's something about a six string and what you do with the effects with a six string that trumps that experience. Um, when I was playing bass, I played a bass with a similar scale length. I had a a white Charvel. Beautiful bass. I still have it. And I used to get these uh, really intense pains in my wrist. I used to constantly be eating ibuprofen. And it was it was from playing bass. So I overdid it. I really overdid it. I was recording bass for like five days straight, four days straight. That's all I did was record bass. And I, I screwed my, my wrist is ca completely cached. I had to stop playing bass. So maybe these gloves will help. I, I know, you know, my plan is I'm going to be wearing a chicken suit when I play this bass. Um, I, I, ha I have, it's a cardinal suit is what it really is, but saying it's a chicken suit is more fun to say. So um, that chicken suit, it does have some um, provisions for some the material, the, the red fur stuff. It has a like a mitten that you can pull. So I don't know how if I'm gonna cut that or what I'm gonna do. I can maybe strap it back, wind it off with some cord. But I do know I want to have those black gloves to color my hand, cover my hand, and then I can use those cots. I have those finger cots. Um, so I will. I that'll be part of the costume is those gloves. They were marked down. I think they were a dollar seventy nine. They're like twelve dollar gloves if you buy them on eBay. You can get them direct to China for really cheap because that's all they're really worth. So yeah, I'm gonna gonna be um, doing finger protection. More than likely, I'm gonna try to um, put these rubber cots on one and one and cover them with this. They also have a base playing glove. I got. I, um, maybe I'm going to order one of those and see how the glove works out for me to pr protect my fingers because your fingers get tore up if you go from playing a, a six string guitar and you hop over to a bass you'll you'll be you'll be feeling some pain in your fingertips so yeah I have all that stuff uh, figured out <laughs> the power wound strings are going to come i'm going to put those on there and then i can maybe start trying to play this and write some more music for it and play some more one of the one of the options i have is don't play don't play this thing play play the ibanez micro because that won't that won't hurt me that's a short scale. It won't it won't hurt, hurt my wrist as much as playing that. So maybe for recording that might be a good idea, especially if I'm processing it, if I'm running it through, uh, like a, if you know what a Schumann PLL sounds like, if you know what Justin Pearson's bass sounds like, you can look up Justin Pearson, check him out. His band, The Locust, he's in a band called Dead Cross with Mike Patton, and he uses some um, phenomenal. Uh, bass distortion patches that the root of that is using this thing called the Schumann PLL. It's not it's not a bass distortion. It's a phase locked loop. It's a complicated um, type of oscillator. Uh, real rare. It's almost like a piece of lab equipment as opposed to a pedal. You know, it doesn't even really look like a pedal. It's it's like a big black box. It's just covered in knobs. So that's the sound, one of the sounds that I've been working with mainly. Uh, the idea with the band is to have my wife playing her bass and then I will play the BC Fish, as I'm calling it. And it was just kind of a funny coincidence because when the, the pickup arrived, it was wrapped. They had this uh, 
logo tape and it's a bass with tuning pegs on its tail and if you are in on the joke that's what this is all about there's there's um huge chips on this base that i just covered up with these bass stickers and i then i call it the bc fish the bass masterson so um hopefully uh i'll be able to play this without it wrecking my wrist too much um the other side of the flip side of this is I had gone for some testing. They told me I was close to being diabetes type 2, and they had prescribed me uh, medicine for that, which I had an allergic reaction to that medicine, and I ended up not taking it. The doctor was like, we have other medicine we can give you. Well, they, she never prescribed it. So I went back for my physical just two years later. and my sh blood sugar was really high so she called up freaking out your diabetes type 2 you got to make all these lifestyle changes so i'm looking at um using a monk monkfish sugar substitute monk fruit, monk fruit uh sugar substitute uh, so i can continue to have iced tea and lemonade mixed that's what i really like to drink um if you know me, you know I make all of some lifestyle changes and I've been living a more healthy lifestyle and then to get slapped down with this, it's like, you know, well, I was able to enjoy a little bit of time where I had a diet where I had ice cream <laughs> and, and I had regular lemonade and iced tea and it's like, I'm gonna have to make some changes. So I'm gonna be uh, changing up on some new medication she prescribed me a sleep aid, which should lead to a more stable. Um, I had problems with extreme lethargy or like I'm unbelievably tired. Over the past few years, I've struggled and it's taken a lot out of me, like where I would have been more productive if I wasn't uh, able to stay awake. So I'm hoping that that's just a symptom of the diabetes and when I... I haven't looked into it yet. Um, I do. I do need to spend some time researching that. But yeah, I'm going to be making some dietary changes and some different medication, and hopefully, I'll be able to avoid uh, going through the whole saga of uh, insulin and all that. I know, you know, this runs in my family. Um, my grandma had it really badly. I, I know more than likely my dad had it too. Uh, he just never got tested. I'm really surprised. I've got a younger brother. I'm really surprised he doesn't have it. Uh, but I don't know if he's been tested or if he has is experiencing any symptoms. But I also know that he drinks diet pop. He doesn't have sugar in his diet. So there you go. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how it pans out. You know, I like to, I like to share stuff about my life. I'm pretty open about what's going on with me, and I'm not a real private person about stuff like that because I don't think it really matters. I think it makes it more interesting for you guys if you know what's really going on with me. If I've got stuff that's wrong with me that's affecting my life in a big way, you should know. <laughs> if you're a fan of what I do uh, making music wise and my projects and stuff like that if you appreciate what I do you should know well I'm doing this stuff but on the other side of it you know because I think I think that it's more important to try to rise above stuff that's going to hold you back than use it as an excuse really that's the point you know is like okay i had this accident and i lost my fingertips but i continued and powered through that and that has brought a lifetime 
of fruition of making music that makes me feel like I'm worth something. You know, makes me feel special. Makes me feel like I did something good. And uh, when I listen to it, it's it's a thrill for me. You know, so that's part of why I do this stuff. It's not it's not so much to get over on the public or sell or get money. Chicks, that whole thing of like you hear people, you know. I mean, I, I, I there's a percentage of it. I'm a show off, so that's wired into me, and that's gonna affect how I behave. But uh, the other part of it is, we as human beings can really do some amazing things when we put our mind to it. So that's the takeaway is positive mental attitude and don't let don't let stinking thinking or negativity bring you down. You know, like I was alive for the punk thing of where it went from one extreme with Emerson and Lake and Palmer having this incredible equipment. You have Greg Lake with a golden cape with <laughs> this giant uh, uh, analog synthesizer, his huge rack upon rack of synthesizers up there playing classical music. And it real quickly, that coin was flipped and, and punk came around and real quickly turned into hardcore you know so there is that there is that uh other side of the coin where a lot of people not just me a lot of people were like we're not we're not going to buy into this bullshit that you need to be able to play like jimmy page or dave gilmore even to be able to put some music out, to be able to put something together. And so I, I really admire uh, that about the punk community, although I never was into that music and I didn't listen to it. Uh, I can't appreciate it. And that culture, there's a lot of real good stuff that came out of that culture, really good stuff that came out of it. That's on the flip side of the other thing where there was like kind of just hedonistic and uh, people becoming addicted you know that's that's not good so it's it's a complicated subject when you talk about music and it's a personal thing you know it really is a personal thing and I'm really lucky to be in the position where I'm able to do what I can do. And I never kid myself about that. Every time we go out, I say to my wife, uh, like a half a dozen times, this is so unbelievably fucking cool that we can do this. I can't, I cannot believe that I were, I'm up here pretending that this is real. And it is real at that point. We're playing the music, it's loud, it's coming out of a PA. You know, it's, I can kind of throw my middle finger up to the world and say, I don't, I don't need that system. I don't need a bar. I don't need a quote unquote manager. I can do it myself. And that's what I'm really grateful for is that I was born in that time when the, um, it went from being kind of out of reach when I was younger to totally feasible as I got older. I was there for the turnaround. And I guess sometimes that's what it takes for people to be able to appreciate and do something is knowing how it is when it's not feasible. Coming out of a little bit of that can give you a lot of motivation to try harder. So, uh, yeah, you can look at me as being like having a pity party and we're giving too much information and all that on this channel. This is kind of just for me. 
you know it's it's just where I uh, keep track of my life and my projects and keep make sense of it uh, for myself through this process of getting on here and talking about it so it's a it's a selfish thing and I've, I've brought that up many many times that this is really you know um, kind of a it's not not for you as much as it is for me so if you're here thank you uh, enjoy the good weather hug your pets is an important thing um, I don't I don't want to talk about politics there's everybody's talking about politics on this thing but I will say I saw some footage and it looked like this footage that I saw either that was doctored or it really did look like he was shot there's a footage of an angle of somebody where you can see his ear open up for one frame like when the bullet was going through it, it and uh, on the flip side of that it almost seems to me that would make more sense that this was set up and that there were other people there another professional really trained shooter who took that shot as opposed to this poor kid that they pinned it on um, I heard that Joe Biden said why did you move your head <laughs> that's what he said to Trump uh, and I'm also like just in shock I can't I cannot believe this is happening again I can't it's like they're bringing this guy back we got to have this turkey again and what's going to happen next when they uh, are they going to make Sleepy Joe sit down are they gonna are they gonna bring Hillary back out again I mean I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know but I'm not a I'm that's not my thing and I shouldn't talk about it but I just wanted to say I did I did spend a considerable amount of time looking at all that stuff and I did find um, footage that seems to because like I looked at the blood and the photo that they put up of the the guy with his head blown out the blood is a couple shades darker but ear, yeah as opposed to his ear and I like I, I extracted those images of just the color of the blood and put them next to each other and looked at it and they are different but that could be explained that by when was that picture taken did the blood oxidize because it does change colors pretty quickly so I like I said I really do think that it was a miracle or a unbelievable slim coincidence that he turned his head just at that moment instead of it taking out his head and I'm glad that it didn't because um, a political assassination is a bad is a bad thing it'll be interesting to see how much does this change things is it all of a sudden gonna be like the guy's walking on water and he can't do any wrong it seems that way and what's really crazy is this guy, he 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 gets shot in the ear, and KG <laughs> from Tenacious D takes the hit. <laughs> like, it it couldn't be more silly. Anyway, um, I said I wasn't going to talk about that stuff, but I I did want to comment on that. And it's a real divisive thing, you know, with 
this guy, it's like people just automatically say he's a Nazi. And, like, I think a lot of people voted for that guy who weren't Nazis or racists, who don't even think that he's like that, and that never crossed their mind. But the only reason that they thought it would be a good idea to vote for that guy was because maybe he was not part of that system, and maybe he could offer some change. So people getting like really angrier and bitter about it and like they hate him. Um, I don't like the guy either. I really couldn't stand him when they had him. Um, they had that television show where he was firing people. Not a fan. Not a fan. Um, it really unbelievably proud, full of himself person. And I don't, that's not attractive to me. But um, on the other side, people getting so upset about it of like they're unfriending people. Like I've seen people say, oh, he voted for Trump for sure. Like they, they think about this person and they put them, paint them in this negative light. Like that guy's a racist and he hate, hates people of color and he hates homosexuals. And yeah, it's like... You're assuming a lot at that point, you know, and if you look at what's happened in this country, irregardless of who you want to blame it on, it's just insane. And it's like, is there, is there even any hope? So, of course, of course, you can say, oh, it isn't Sleepy Joe's fault that the economy went like it did, that fentanyl came in, that the borders are open, and that we have all these um, transvestites in our libraries teaching our children how to, how to booty dance. Okay? But, of course, people are going to blame it on him. That's what people do. People blame the puppet of whoever is in the office. And it just seems crazy to me like they're, they're just cha changing gears and that the, uh, the, the RNC was like a fucking acid trip. It really was. It, you had the Hulkster up there all like coked out of his mind, ripping his shirt off. And then... Um, horrible uh, kid, kid rock. You can suck my D, and he puts the microphone down by his crotch, and mm, and like they, they, they changed the camera angle, and they didn't have play that audio. It was just silent. But like everybody in the audience heard that. They all heard. You can suck my D and, and saw him stick his microphone in between his legs and shove it out. And like, this is a, the Republican National Convention and they're, 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 they're doing that? I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it, uh... They, they had a band, uh, Kid Rock, his thing was a Metallica. Um, he was playing in the key of D. That was what was going on in the background of Kid Rock's rapping. It was Metallica. And when the Metallica finished, when Kid Rock was done, they were playing, I don't know if it was the house band or if it was just over the PA or if it was only on the, maybe it was at the Fox coverage I was watching. I watched it on the internet. But they were playing this audio 
And I think it was only on the feed that I watched, but it was Metallica. It was, um, it was Enter Sandman. It was like generic, heavy guitar, like chugging. And eventually I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is Enter Sandman. So I, like, like that piece of music, those notes are, they're like such a tired meme to me from hearing people play it at Guitar Center. Going through the 90s, I hear, like hearing that every time I was at Guitar Center. And, and like bad cover bands, it just, it represents like everything that's wrong about rock and roll to me is that it is wrapped up in those four notes or however many notes that is. Da, 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 da. that and it it was like this is America I don't know it, it, it was it was like uh, one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life and and they were they're were all up there like banging their heads to it and acting like you know they're hip. Like, this is, you know, this is just another day in America. <laughs> and uh, it couldn't have been a more bizarre and long. It was long. And then, like, I don't know if you noticed, his wife wouldn't kiss him. He kept trying to kiss her. And she kept turning her head and stuff. It, it was it was really weird they announced her and they started playing this music and she came out and did this catwalk where she kept doing all this weird stuff with her eyes and her mouth duck mouth stuff and she didn't say a word she didn't say anything it was like they announced her they're playing music they're showing her strutting her stuff and making eyes for the camera and doing duck mouth. And after about a minute and 40 seconds of that, they went to a commercial. <laughs> it was just, it, it couldn't have been uh, weirder. Really, really weird. And I noticed people saying now like, oh, well, he didn't collude with Russia. He didn't all that stuff that they said that he did, he didn't do. And like, I really thought he was guilty of all that stuff. Like, to me, when they say somebody did something and they're in power, I'm like, of course they did it. You know? I It never dawns on me that like, hey, maybe this it's just this other party is, um, they're so full of hate and rage that they'll just, flat out make shit up so it, how whatever side of the fence you're on man it, um i don't know maybe some, there's some trump supporters out there could explain to me how it made any sense to have hulk hogan tearing his shirt off and kid rock doing his suck my d routine with the generic enter sandman Maybe you could explain to me how that's good, how that's going to help with anything. Cuz to me cuz to me it was it was a fucking embarrassment. If I had anything to do with the Republican Party, I I'd be like we're slumming when we bring out people like Kid Rock and Hulk Hogan. Like this is serious business. This is serious shit, what's going on in the world. It's not, nothing to be uh, suck my D. It, like, w there's legitimate problems with, like, the, the food supply and shit. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say other than whatever is, po is popular and what is good for the mainstream is never going to be good for me. I'm just not wired that way. I'm wired to reject, you know, what is fed to the people, what they spoon feed people, and people don't even notice it. They don't even notice. Like, how many people noticed 
that they had generic like bad like sounding like a synth guitar almost like a casio version of a heavy metal guitar playing like it was like almost like two guitars playing two different songs it was just like the worst generic heavy metal i don't know i think a lot of people that stuff just goes right past them where there's another type of person where that's going to really stick in their craw you know so that was my limited take on it i'm sorry i got out of control and talked for 15 minutes when i said i wasn't going to talk about that stuff but um and don't please don't come and uh accuse pd of being a trumpster because i watched it of course i'm gonna watch it of course he just he just almost got sh shot in the head he was on stage trying to show his chart and he got his ear blown off i don't care what party you're on if something like that happens and you're coming back out on the stage i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it i just wonder about um his other rallies today they were in grand rapids i know that is it televised they only televised the one where he got shot in the head, huh? I just heard it on the radio this morning. Like, oh. That's what it seemed like to me. Anyway, I, I always... <laughs> if, if there is a conspiracy to be read into, I'm reading into it. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to cut you loose. Uh, I don't think I will ever see a candidate for that office that I could say that I would that I would trust as caring about John Q. Public. And if they put this guy back in that office, are they gonna let him are they gonna let him have a cell phone? and go on Twitter every night. Hopefully, if he comes back and he's going to be in that office, I hope he does some things differently. I, I, I hope we can avoid the... Um, it, it went from being um, like politics to like a like we don't talk about politics at the dinner table to that's all we talk about now and it was it's uh we're dividing we're turning brother against brother over it and that's that's that was the worst part of it anyway you guys i'll cut you loose talk to you soon hug your pets and peace